Welcome back to Power and Politics. As we reported earlier, Chinese President Hu Jintao began a crucial state visit to the U.S. There he is arriving. He's preaching a policy of harmony between the two superpowers. China now can be legitimately called a superpower, but the relationship is not on the best of terms, with no resolution in sight for some ongoing problems. You've got North Korea, you've got China's aggressive trade policies. Is there any hope for repair for this rocky relationship? What's at stake here? A lot. Let's dig down a bit. I'm joined by two Washington, uh, from Washington, my two observers with a great deal of experience in American-Chinese relations. Jay Taylor is a former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State. He's also the author of the book, Generalissimo Chiang Kai-shek and the Struggle for Modern China. Good to have you here, sir. Yeah, thank you. And uh, cheek by jowl, Charles Horner, Senior Fellow at the Hudson Institute and the author of Rising China and Its Postmodern Fate. Uh, Charles Horner, uh, good to have you here. Uh, and let me start with you. It was a pretty uh, rough year for China-U.S. relations. What's at stake at this meeting, Charles? I think it's going to be more of the same. and I don't know that the stakes are particularly large or that the meeting will mark any great departure. You know, there have been meeting between President Nixon and Mao Zedong launched something and the meeting between Deng Xiaoping when he came to the U.S. in 1979 marked a really big change with important consequences. I think this particular meeting will not be of that uh, size or consequence. I think it's going to be another part of the unfolding of the new relationship between the two countries, but I doubt that it will produce anything uh, decisive about that relationship one way or another. Yeah, uh, Charles, they've certainly, they're talking about building aircraft carriers, they're talking about a fifth generation fighter that we've got glimpses of recently. They are asserting their military capabilities in certainly key places, not just North Korea, but of course the Taiwan Straits have been a big issue. How, how seriously does America take the military threat side of, the, of, of China? Oh, I think it takes the threat seriously. Let's remember that, let's say, in the last 20 years ago, three big things have happened which actually affect uh, the evolution of these, of these balances. One, of course, was the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. And the other was the 9-11 attack in the United States uh, in 2001, which essentially set in motion a series of events that got the United States involved, let's say, in West Asia, in the Islamic world, and wars in Afghanistan and Iraq and then back in Afghanistan again and a huge investment in that part of the U.S. national security program. Whether or not the U.S. was going to respond to what the Chinese were doing in response to that because I think they saw it as a kind of opportunity for them or at least a window of opportunity was further complicated by what happened in 2008 when of a sudden there were serious constraints that had been placed on the United States to respond beyond what it's been doing. And you will notice that the U.S. Secretary of Defense has, in effect, placed a cap on the U.S. military budget and has, in effect, placed a cap on the development of the kind of high technology weapons that uh, the Chinese seem to have been focusing on and has said that, in effect, the resources need to be devoted to the other Let's use some military lingo here. The, the other spectrum of military counterinsurgency and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. And I think the Chinese have about said that having seen that, uh, this represents an opportunity for them to exploit. Now, the problem is they've been a bit, um, how shall I say, a bit oafish in doing some of these things. And perhaps, to use some American slang, coming on too strong, which has alarmed a lot of people. Now, that's a mistake. And I suspect that the president who will want to try to correct that is already correcting it by giving interviews to the Washington Post, talking about harmony, uh, by buying ads that are going to appear in the United States, saying that, that China means no harm to anyone. Yeah, and of course... The, diffi the difficulty is, is that the situation with Japan was, after all, a trade problem that existed with a security ally, or with South Korea, mm -hmm. or with Taiwan. Huge amounts of U.S. Uh, debt are held by Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Saudi Arabia, who all have a different kind of deep relationship with the United States than, than China does. And part of that just has to do with the sense of what the rise of China means. After all, no one is worried about the rise of India. I've not heard anyone talk about the rise of India as somehow a bad thing for the United States. Even though India is rising, has a very impressive military establishment, it even has an aircraft carrier, which China doesn't yet have. And I think the reason, at least in the United States and other parts of the world, is no one sees the rise of India as 
anything other than supporting the kinds of, uh, if you will, values and approaches to government and international affairs which the United States finds congenial. The rise of China is something else. The system is so radically different politically, being a one-party dictatorship, uh, promoting, therefore, the rise of a different kind of person to the summit of political life in China, that there's an enormous amount of uncertainty. And until we see some indication that that's going to change in some other direction. See, that's the strategic significance, the strategic significance, in my opinion, of President Obama's having raised human rights. It may be a humanitarian issue that there are some people who are being mistreated yeah. who shouldn't be mistreated. But the big issue is precisely that of understanding how we can have compatible views of the world and how people ought to live in it. I got to leave, leave it, it there. Up. Unfortunately, gents, I've got to leave oh, okay. it there. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay Taylor and, and Charles Horner. Uh, very interesting discussion. We'll be watching how this uh, meeting unfolds and what issues. As you both say, they won't be resolved, but at least they'll be out in the open. And of course, that matters a lot, not only here, but in China, they're watching this very closely. Thanks to both of you. Thank well, you. thank you.